Good evening. Are we ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right. Welcome to our CARES meeting tonight. Um, we're going to go ahead and start it out with the invocation and the pledge, which will be led by Chaplain Emmanuel. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather here this evening. Thank you, Father, for giving Sheriff Michael Lopez the vision to create this board, and for Captain Spain and his staff to see that the vision became a reality. We entrust this gathering to you. As the board discusses the business at hand, show them your purpose and enlighten them so that they can understand how you want them to complete their responsibilities. In everything they do, let them seek your favor and blessings. Help them stay on track by directing their thoughts, words, decision, and action in the right direction. As they plan, review, and make decisions, let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice. Now I'll go ahead and turn the floor over to Chairman McCrimmon to be, call the meeting to order. The care board is come to order. Uh, Wednesday is Tuesday, April 5th, time 6 :02. Okay, we'll go ahead and move forward with the roll call. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with Chairman Fred McCrimmon. Here. Mr. Leonard Thompson. Here. Ms. Lissette Campos. Here. Mr. Owen McCurdy. Here. Mr. Hector Acosta. Mr. David Couch. Here. And Mr. Michael Bast. Here. Okay, you all have a copy of uh, the past two monthly minutes meeting. I had a chance to read it. Has everyone had a chance to review it? Yes. Uh, is there any changes or any reason the minute can't be approved? Any changes on Motion to approve. Second? Second. Both uh, meetings have been approved. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes. So as far as housekeeping issues, we have to get the signed uh, approval recommendation letter from the January meeting, which I have right here.
I will go ahead and move forward with old business. I believe that we, the board has to review and discuss the Rivera of Huckleberry Internal Affairs investigation that was presented in February, as well as the um, required training presentation that was put on for February. It was done. Was the synopsis of those? If you would, uh, the the Vera Aguirre internal. What was that involved? I know it's. I believe that was a complaint that uh, somebody said he was harassing her. Yes. yes. Yeah. Any discussion on that one? No. And I believe that was. Found without merit, right? Right. Correct. Correct. Exonerated. Exonerated. Yes. So uh, the, the discussion with the board was uh, good. No recommendations or anything to that. No. Sir. All right. And then the other thing for that month was the um, required training for our sworn personnel. The various um, mandatory trainings. Can I go back to the discipline? What recommendation do we make? This case is over, done, exonerated, whatever. So if you guys have ideas or suggestions or feel that we have, might have missed something during the investigation or the summary, um, you can make recommendations. Okay. I, I don't know why we, these things, these people have been put through the ringer. Then it comes before us, we come more public. Well, it's it's public record once it's closed. I understand, but and I believe the sheriff wanted to do that because a lot of people don't understand that um, how law enforcement officers are held accountable for their actions, or that we are at least um, more investigated if we're suspected of a crime. I mean, the general public doesn't. You know, a lot of people don't know that, and I believe that's why um, the sheriff wanted to share that. You know, um, transparency. So we can move on to March's internal investigative summary, and I have not. No. Um, okay. we, if we're discussing this, uh, we're, we're not on that yet. We're not on the inner office memo yet? No. Nope. That's, that's today. That's today. Yes. Okay. 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 There was no discussion on the required training for sworn officers. Okay, so moving on to, I think it was in March, a uh, uh, review and discuss the communications supervisor Stephen Gordon in your internal affairs investigation summary. Any comments, no. questions, suggestions on that? <clears throat> Here, so I'm not quite sure what that was about. Well, we couldn't because of um, things that couldn't be revealed to the board, so as to what the actual um, uh, discipline we couldn't make any because we didn't know. So, no, there's no other discussion on that either. I'm not familiar with that. That was the, uh, that was the communication. Uh, that would be the email. Oh, okay, that was the communication officer supervisor, correct? Yes. And I want to say it's because of, um, what's the term? What's the, uh, no, the, the why you are not allowed to discuss this person because of confidentiality. Uh, yes, yes. So because of that, there were things that we couldn't really decide as to whether or not there would need to be additional training or um, further recommendations. Something because we didn't know ourselves. Well, with all, all the information, it's hard to make a recommendation on any subject that we don't have. Information right. That's my, my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Costa had mentioned something about whether he had mental health issues or anything else like this, and we couldn't divulge those because of HIPAA and yeah, sort of uh, things. So yeah. they, that was that was yeah. the stuff they were looking at was that they couldn't have the full information. 
Well, that was redacted from the documents. So other than that, no, there's far as I know, no other. And the topic for review at that time was the public records request and redaction process. Was there any comments, questions, or suggestions on that? I know the sheriff's office is now um, looking at possibly getting rid of the uh, car camera, I think. Possibly that. It's not on the news. That I don't know anything about. Come on, that was on the news. That's where I get my information down from the news. About but removing the in car cameras? I don't know anything about that. If you want me to get additional information and try to find something no, else, it's still in, in, talk about it in the next meeting. Either orange or orange or OPD also. Um, because of because of the data, the uh, amount of information, and simply because of the body worn camera, they said they didn't really need the in car cameras. Yes. Because they're capturing the same thing. Exactly. And I can find it. out if you guys want additional information, you can certainly find yeah, out and bring it up in the next meeting. I'll do that. All right, if there's no more discussion on that, we'll move on to our new business. Um, Detective James Ford G. will now present an internal investigation summary. I believe a copy of the summary will be provided to all board members for review. Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to give a summary of our internal investigation report, uh, IA 2022-0003. On December 28, 2021, the Oslo County Sheriff's Office received an external complaint from a citizen against the deputy. The complaint alleged a male subject who was driving a civilian vehicle followed her to her, who, wow, to her residence in Orange County. Uh, the male was said to be wearing plain clothes not display a gun, a badge, or any insignia that would identify him as a law enforcement officer. Uh, the allegation was that the male threatened to issue her a citation for her driving behavior. Uh, the complainant, not knowing he was in fact a law enforcement officer, went ahead and entered her residence to avoid the confrontation. The complainant learned a short time later from video surveillance outside of the residence that there were several Orlando Police Department officers uh, outside the street. Uh, she exited her residence. She now noticed the same male subject who confronted her earlier was present, but he was now driving a Osceola County Sheriff's Office marked vehicle. Uh, a couple days later after this incident, the complaint alleged that the same deputy posted negative things about her which detailed her age, street name, vehicle description on the next door app. Uh, this is how the complainant uh, ultimately learned uh, the <coughs> deputy's name from the posting and learned that he lived in the same subdivision that she did. Uh, the complainant called the Orlando Police Department to uh, report, report this harassment uh, from, from the deputy. All of the body-worn camera footage was obtained from the Orlando Police Department for both incidents in review. Uh, the recorded telephone call between the deputy and the Orlando Police Department communications operator was obtained in review. I documented in detail what took place on all the body-worn camera and what was said uh, during the conversation with uh, the OPD comm center operator. And forwarded the, my report to the deputy's chain of command. Their findings of the investigation are as follows. The conclusions of the investigation are based on a preponderance of evidence established during this investigation. A preponderance of evidence is evidence of greater weight or more convincing than the evidence offered in opposition to it. The alleged policy violations are considered closed as follows. As to the deputy, the allegation of unbecoming conduct was sustained. Sustained is a finding or conclusion that an allegation is true and the deputy receives an eight-hour suspension. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, 
Yes, exactly. What's the uh, complaint of the postings on the app? Did yes. they, the neighborhood app? Was that verified? No, sir, it was not. It didn't have, so it didn't have any effect or bearing on the discipline? Correct, sir. Okay. Yes, uh, <clears throat> At the very end, you, know, you all keep asking for the uh, video evidence and other evidence that the woman claimed that she had but she never produced. Correct, sir. So, this seems to me like this is one of those flip the coin who's, who's telling the truth. Well, there was several body cam videos. Okay. That you did get those? Yes, sir. Okay. Did get those and did review those. We were never able to obtain the video surveillance from the residents or copies of the postings, alleged postings. Okay, so he uh, you know, said you're a bad boy and he, he, what, he gave you an eight hour suspension. Uh, is that a demotion? You got a demotion? No, sir. No, sir. No demotion. Just eight hour suspension. Because the, the word devotion's got a little X in the box on this one. No, it's to the, it's to the, to the right. So you're waiting to open the boxes after the thing. See here? Uh, right from the end. Yeah, but to me, that wasn't yeah, okay. When you did that, you said your motion is mean that's what you did. Oh, I can see, I can see how it would look that way, yes. Yes, sir. But it's, it's for suspension without yeah. pay. All right, we're going to go ahead and move forward. Nice topic for review is the Baker Board. But we're going to go a little um, before the Baker Board and how it came about. We're going to go ahead and um, talk about the Outreach Services Program, which Victor Cares is a part of. So, in 20, January of 2021, Sheriff Lopez had a, a vision for a completely new division. Um, that division became Outreach Services, and since then we have put together a number of different programs, one of them being CARES, um, another one being a, a crisis response team, uh, a veteran uh, outreach program, police athletic league we're working on, we're putting together a whole juvenile uh, outreach services and um, a number of other programs, but we wanted to highlight those and then segue into what Victor is. Um, speaking on that will be Sergeant Joel Nicholson. Hello, hey, board. Uh, you guys need me to introduce myself. Or anything. So as the captain already had talked about, Uh, CARES, obviously that was one of the programs that uh, we've already started with y'all. Um, so we'll get into Victor a little bit. Victor is going to be very similar to this, but um, I'll bring up um, Deputy Ben Polson, who's going to be the, who said the next slide for me? Yeah. He's going to be the main person for it. So one of our biggest programs that we're working on right now, we had a grant through the Board of County Commissioners, um, which is going to be through uh, JAG grants. And uh, Project Ease is the Emergency Access Safe Entry. So every year, uh, probably monthly, the fire department and us have to pay for doors, which is taxpayers' money, to forcefully enter people's houses where they have fallen out of bed. Uh, mostly it's the fire department because they call for assist calls, and uh, they can't get out, out of bed or off the floor without the assistance of the fire department. So every time they kick that door in, especially with the cost of everything going up, five, $600, uh, it costs taxpayers' money to fix those doors. So, this program what we're going to do is we're going to put a little lockbox on the outside of the residence, um, whether it's on a door handle or a railing, um, or just mount it to the stucco um, or wood structure of the house. Uh, the lockbox will give us law enforcement and first responders, so EMS and fire, access to the residence. 
Uh, the only people who are going to have access to that uh, lockbox code is going to be emergency personnel. The neighbor won't have it, their best friend won't have it, anything like that. So if you all know anybody in the community that you think would benefit from this program, it's going to be 100 percent cost free. Um, and we're actually working with uh, community partners, some of our realtor companies, and some of the department or um, uh, I don't want to say Home Depot because the home improvement stores, let's put it that way, uh, to see if they will help bring in lock boxes and fund this as well. So um, that's pretty much that program. So next one. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. I was actually thank you. I was going to ask each program if you have any questions based off of those. Uh, is that just for housing, or is it apartments, or condos, or, it, or any, any entrance to a, a uh, residence? Very good question. So actually, uh, it will be for apartments and all that, but they have to have the landlord or the property manager's uh, approval to do so. All they need is a written express uh, agreement that the landlord is, of that person is okay with us doing it, and we will put it up there. What if he says no? If they say no, then unfortunately no, we won't be able to, because then the liability would come on us. Who so. they contact? Um, right now it's our elderly services division, or they can call the non-emergency number. A deputy can come out and they can refer them to us. Um, at the end of this presentation, I'm actually going to have our website up there, or I'm sorry, our email address uh, for our outreach services that all my team has access to. So if you know somebody, you can email to that, or anybody from that's watching the video online can email us, and it'll come right to our team, and then we can take care of the needs depending on what program it's associated with. Any other questions we reference that program? Both good questions, thank you. Safe place. So our team went out the uh, last week and got uh, 15 businesses signed up within a matter of about an hour. Uh, so safe place is based from the LGBTQ community, where members, if they feel like they're being targeted of LGBT, LGBTQ, can um, go to this business and feel safe until law enforcement arrives. So all this is a sticker and no cost to the community or to the members of the business. Uh, they put the, the sticker on there. We have English and Spanish, so we can put both if they want both. If they want one language over another one, doesn't matter. And it signifies that they support LGBTQ members and that they can come in there if they need help or assistance for law enforcement. Any questions related to that one? Nope. So one thing, went back to what you were talking about with the uh, ease, we did run into that with uh, an area of town where uh, they have a certain district or landlord issue they didn't want them on the business so they had to take one off of their their window so that was an issue we ran into already where we had somebody say yeah i'm willing to do it as a business but their landlord who they rent from said no take it down so, so yes ma'am oh. okay. so this this is this targets that the uh lgbtq community not targets, we assist with them. So that way they, yes sir. Directed yes, sir. Well, I guess my question is, why wouldn't, why wouldn't any business be a safe place for any citizen on the street that needed? That was my question. I don't, I don't. Why are we seeing only now that particular group? It was a, a program idea that somebody had because Orange County does similar to that um, because of Orlando Pride and everything that happened after uh, Pulse is where they came up with the idea. So we kind of piggybacked off that idea. I, I, I agree with what you're saying as far as all businesses should be open to help anybody in the community. It was just a, a program idea that we came up with. What, the sheriff's block, yes, sir? Yes, sir. What kind of criminal activity are you talking about? Just beating the guy out? Because Anything. So some some people from uh, uh, with LGBTQ, which the, the acronym, if they're trans or anything like that, some people are very hostile toward them because they don't believe in their lifestyle. So they will target them based solely off of that. Target them to do what? Be, make them a victim of a crime, whether it's it's a battery, like you said, try to try to steal stuff from them, or just basically harass them at the point to where they feel uncomfortable. I, I'm, I'm just gonna make a comment. Yeah. I have no prejudice toward this at all, but to me, I think if you look at a different, maybe give an, offer a different perspective of this, this to me just further separates society into these increments. That's, to me, it's, I, I just think it's, uh, I think it's more negative than a positive. I yeah. think there's too much emphasis, there's too much emphasis placed by the social, by the media, the social media, <clears throat> and, and the society in general to separate 
everybody in America into a different category depending on what they think and what they live. As far as I'm concerned, live and let live. You know? And the other the other comment is this to me the reason it should be unnecessary is this is a common sense thing. If you're out in public and you have public businesses, and somebody's trying to stab you or rob you, if you run into a business, that you should go to a business that, and call 911. They're going to call 911. So I, I think this, to me, this is my expression, my opinion, is more of a negative than a positive because, again, it further segments society. I mean, it, cre I, it creates more division, in my opinion. I agree right. with everything that he said. I think it creates more division when you put labels like that. But everybody's entitled to your opinion. It's like saying, yeah, yeah, oh, this saying, is a safe place for black Americans or Hispanic Americans. It's not. It's, I just but, that's my it, but, but it is what it is in our society. We have division already. Yeah. And so I understand what the program, I've seen it on TV, on the news. I, I kind of understand what they're trying to do. But the division's already there. If we lived in heaven, we wouldn't have to experience this. But it is what it is. I, I wish it was. I wish personally that it was better. But it, I think there's more to this program than what you're explaining. I've seen it on the news. There's some good things for this program also. So I'm not saying it's not a good program. I'm saying yeah, to me it further fuels segmenting or segregating our culture, our society into things. There, there's prejudice everywhere. We all can agree with that. But we're trying to say, to me, what is being promoted in today's society is that everybody's prejudiced, or everything is prejudiced, and this further fuels that. Uh, I, that's all my opinion. I think that's a common sense thing. Somebody runs into your business needs help, you assist them. And, 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 and the other thing is, if someone runs in, if I own a business, somebody ran into the church and they needed help, I don't know if they're gay, lesbian, or whatever. So one of the things is it's actually in our our, our policy on um, interaction with people from LGBTQ is that a lot of times they are hesitant to interact with law enforcement or other things because of their insecurities as as being part of that that um, community. Okay, so um, just recently, actually, one of our other teammates just interacted with one where. He came from California and mentioned how much he loves living in this county because he feels that his intera he's had interaction with law enforcement already on numerous times and his interaction here is way different than it is in California because of the, the climates and, and things. So we're just trying to create the evolution of enveloping everybody. I, I see where you guys' personal opinions are on that. I'm just It's just a program that we adapted because of After Pulse and everything else like that. They were targeted there. They were trying to just create that harmonious community and, and let them know that these businesses are okay with what your life choices are and that they, they are okay with holding you or helping you until law enforcement gets there. That's all that really stands for. I, I, I disagree. I think it's a, I I'm being attacked and I'm trans. Nobody knows that I'm trans, but somebody targeted me for whatever reason. Right. So I have to come up to this business and say, oh my God, this is, you know, I'm trans and, and this is why they're targeting me. It just doesn't make sense. I agree with what he says. It, all respect to your program. I, I thought at first Safe Place was a great program, but I see that to me, it signals out and it's like just puts people in categories. It's like saying, you kind of go back in history, right? Where, oh, you, it's okay to come here because you know, you're a black male, and black males have you know, horrible experiences with police, and then also in Canada, where Hispanic females have that same experience. Are we going to give a category and put a label onto every Safe Place? Oh, this Okay, for you to come, so we're just creating more division in the community. That's just my opinion. I agree with him, but I'll leave it at that. I mean, like he said before, too, you know, I agree with him. Also, we're not living in that world, but we shouldn't keep adding to it either. We should try to, um, you know, treat everybody equal as we possibly could. I appreciate I that everybody's input on that. That's very beneficial. Thank you. Any last thoughts on this program? Yeah, I give you one. Sunday, most segregated, segregated day of the week. Why? Because of people's belief, fear, faith, all those characters. But it would be the 
the same as you as a law enforcement officer. If I'm in need, I don't care what color you are. Right. I, I don't care whether you're gay, straight, any of those things. Are you there to do the job? Are you willing, the person that um, owns the business, and, and I, I guess the other thing is, is be looking at the, the sheriff. The sheriff is the sheriff of all of us in county. All the citizens, all the businessmen, I mean, you can't single that out anybody. And so now all of you all work for the sheriff. And you want people to be responsible of making the right choices because I can tell you there's a lot of people with, that won't get involved. They won't get involved simply because it's their choice. They choose not to get involved, no matter what color a person is. You have other individuals that if there's a, a shooting, you have some that will run to the gunfire. You got some law enforcement officers that will run away from the gunfire. So it, it's, it's, it's choices, but I understand what the intent is, But if I, and I have to agree, I think it's still segregated. It's still divided. And it would be the same as dividing because one of the things that people are constantly telling law enforcement, you all now, you need additional training. You need more training. Sometimes, yes. But sometimes it's just making the right choices. You can't change character flaws to change training. You can't. If that person has a character flaw, if that business doesn't want uh, anybody to come in. It's their choice. Um, and I guess adding to it, a safe place would be for everybody. Not Black Lives Matter. Not the L... Yeah, those are the last ones. But still, um, it's for everybody. It's for anybody that needs assistance. For anybody that needs help, and when you have the I don't know, safe place in the, the symbol of the sheriff, um, yeah, a child, and, and I think it should include everybody. Yeah, you, you, you include that, um, but at the same time, Mr. Chairman, yes, that doesn't say anything about race, color, creed, sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. It just says the sheriff, colors, and a safe place. That's all it says. So well, colors, what does the colors represent? Well, everybody knows what it represents. Right, it has if, significance. You, if, if you do, fine. I have extended family who are in that situation. I, but my, my, I guess my son is the only one. Okay. Yes. They could go into a store that doesn't have one of those and run into a proper word not to get myself in trouble. I'm a straight shooter. Someone who is not you know, very prejudiced against whatever. Yes. And they may go in there and they may not even help. They may be the one beating on them. You just never know. And the program costs us little to no money. All it says is a safe place. Me, you, anybody can go in there because it's a safe place. And it does represent the rainbow flag. I agree. But if you were in trouble, what would you read out of that thing? You are out front. You are in trouble. Is my place? Oh, if I need to go in that business and need help, I don't know. I ain't looking at something. I'm going to the business. I'm not looking for a stick on the window. Yes, I'm not looking for a stick on the window. But if you're part of that other community, that's the person you go look for. If you have a choice of four doors. Okay? So, what about going down the street in a perfect example? The business was willing to accept that. The, the building owner said no. They touched that. So, no. Hear me out. So, the, the LGBTQ community going down and they see one with a sticker, they see one without. So, you know what the message that sends to them? I'm going They're to sure. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's just further, it creates division. Further division. It's fueling division. And the fact, I don't know if we did it because Orange County did, did it. It's not a good reason. And, and I think, just, that, my, honestly, I what I think, 
And you, you find a sheriff, it. you put the sheriff's department's badge on that logo. It's saying, you know, again, segregated this, but we are, from, you know, we are specially catering to this group uh, for this reason, good reason. But what about when are we going to do it for Hispanics? They, they are, they are. There's people in this county oh, yeah. prejudiced against Hispanics. And up north, there's been a lot of violence for, and out west for the Orientals. But you want a safe place for everybody. Well, why don't we just have that little safe place for everybody to take the colors out? I agree. That's you the can, point. You can keep the colors. That's the point. No, well, take the colors out. The You've got a safe place with the sheriff's department on there. I mean, but it, it, it says right there, criminal warning to criminal activity against members of the LGBTQ. So why wouldn't there be a, a, a warning Everybody. against for criminal activity against anyone and everyone? And, I, and I, I'm not splitting hairs, but I just think, so, I'm not sure how well this is. You guys are bringing in great dialogue, and I love it. I, before, so we don't have to over reopen it. Would you like using what you guys are talking about now for the recommendations, and we can put that part of this Which presentation part? for the recommendations? Oh, well, everything is obviously just taking minutes, but I want to make sure if that way you don't have to go back later and do this. We can keep what you guys are talking about. We can put it part of the recommendation letter for this presentation. I just believe this is a more of a, a publicity thing for the sheriff's department. I'm not being ugly or, or unreasonably critical. They're going along with what somebody else does in Orange County. It's, you know, let's look at it. No, we, we do that in law enforcement. Honestly, there's a lot of ideas that we get from other things. You know, there's training topics, any of that stuff. We, we just kind of take from other agencies. That's it, here's the other side of this thing. Where that where I meant by that coming from. Yes, stickers on a building. So, someone who is definitely against that particular, you know, whatever, I'm like you. Probably be teacher. So, they're going to target that thing. For harassment, vandalism, that's the other side. Exactly. So if it doesn't have the colors, the people who know it, they need to be their will because it's being marketed. And that way, maybe everybody else will leave the store alone. But think about our community. And we're pretty decent in most of it. But there is people who are very prejudiced against whatever they are. Green, white, purple, or yellow. We consider all day for the next year and talk about unity. It sounds really good, but when you leave this building, you go out to the real world. People have their own opinion and they're doing all kinds of things. I understand everybody's opinion. I think there's more information for this program. If you had the sheriff come in or gather more information, I've seen it on the news. I can't verbalize it now because I don't remember all the information, but the way they presented it, they had data to back up why they did that, that program launch now. Do you remember what data there was we are talking about? We get it that you, you would need to point to that uh, oh. unveil of it. Can you get the data for the next one? Yeah, I'm not sure what data you're, you're, you're yeah, speaking about. That, so that's that why I'm program sure. was created for a reason. Somebody just didn't think it up and say, let's do this. There's data behind why they implemented it. A lot of it was from the, the idea of Orange County because of Orlando Pride and stuff. All uh, 100% that was why the idea that it came to fruition. Yes, sir. It says up there, <clears throat> it's a display, it's a symbol of safety and understanding for victims of crimes and is a warning to criminal activity against. And I'm stopping right there. What happens if I feel like there's some guy walking down the street who either wants to beat me up, shoot me, stab me, rob or something, and I run into this store? If I run into, say, a 7 Eleven, what are they going to do? I need help. What are they going to do? Well, you don't sell when they call 911 for you. Uh, some of the businesses we've had where. Some of those people haven't got the sense to do that. 
right? Some of them have actually in the past from being on patrol, they actually businesses will lock their doors to keep somebody from coming in after them. So we've had that happen several times. So you gotta look at all the businesses out there. And I just don't know if, if I ran into the place that I need some help that you're gonna have somebody in there smart enough to figure out that I need, they need to call 911. Rather than, because if you're gonna promote it, regardless of who you promote it for, which I agree with them, that. But <clears throat> people need to know that if they got a sign on the front there, this is a safe place. Well, how many homeless guys are going to walk in there? Oh, I need a safe place for a while. You know, I, I, this is just about things that, that need to be right. examined. And ultimately, it's up to the business owner who they allow to, to come in there. That's why some say yes, some say no. The, uh, the, uh, you know, here again, don't take this the wrong way. If people see that the LGBTQ community uh, sees that somebody doesn't have the sign. I think somebody else said it earlier. Uh, or are they going to go start uh, stomp around the sign in front of their stores? It's, 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 a, it's a further division, like, like Leonard said there, that I think it needs to be just like he said, you ain't going to sit here and solve it tonight. But I think a little more thought needs to be put into just exactly how you're going to promote it. Right. There's a, just like anything, there's always a, a thousand possible outcomes or more than a thousand possible outcomes of things that could happen. Um, so I go back to my previous question with what your battle log is here in the minutes. Would you like us to use that in, uh, in a recommendation letter to the sheriff on this program on, on the panels or the board's decision? Or, I mean, that's something you guys can vote on. I just, I don't know where to go with all the dialogue. I think he could, I think he could read the minutes or the discussion and see what what, that's why we do the recommendation letter. So I'm saying if it's something that you guys as the board don't agree with, we can send it up to him and then it's on the sheriff. So if he wants to come in. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you have that to determine if you guys want to make a vote on that to, to do it or however how you all want to do it. There's been a motion that you send it up for um, the sheriff to do as a uh, recommendation. And it's a, what is the recommendation that the sheriff review this further? Get it viewed further um, because I was trying to think of a safe place, and I want to say there's a juvenile or school district has something similar for business. Uh, I'm not sure for the wrong way, of, and, and that's what I was kind of leaning towards. And it did that. They do have the, the um, I think, safe haven or what was some of the other ones where it's like the fire departments where you can yes. drop off a, 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 a child. child or something else. They have the other ones where a lot of police departments like us, we have a sign here in the front, the sheriff's office in KPD and the other one in St. Cloud, they have them inside their, their sheriff's office where they can do like safe ex child exchanges and stuff. So that way there's, you don't know, have the potential for problems, if that's what you're referring to. I, that as well as, um, I want to say someone having mental problems too. And, and there's a lot of different programs. And I want to say that there are other things out there about safe space. Mm -hmm. and, are you going to have the writer on the same sticker? Is that all one sticker? So there's actually more to the bottom of the sticker, which I can get one for you guys for the next board to see what it actually says on there. Um, and and uh, it's only about a uh, five by seven sticker, but I can bring bring those um, for you guys. Because yeah. I don't have, even on my computer, I don't have that. Right. It was if you put the verbiage on there, I think the store would be targeted more harassment. I'd like to make we can move on. I'd like to make a motion that we send a recommendation to the sheriff to do more review and, and consider all the ramifications of this a little further. Second. Second. Third. Third. Any opposed? No. Give the sheriff some send a recommendation to the recommendation matter. Yes. Yeah, we'll get that tied up and have it for you all for the next meeting. Okay. And the date. The day, yeah, I'll, I'll figure out what day you're, was that in the, uh, Mr. McCurdy, was that in the media release that you heard the data? When I'm reading about it now. Okay. But I, on the, it was on the news. Okay, yeah, because I know they did a media release about the program, it but started, that's what I'm trying to figure out what data. It started in 2015 in Seattle. The Seattle Police Department started, and, and it's been rolled out throughout the country. Okay. This is when you guys are adopting it now. Yeah. I didn't speak on the data because I have no 
information on that. So, but we'll, we'll try to find what you're looking for and present it for y'all or provide it. So the newest one, um, Deputy Fournier, uh, y'all have met before. He's part of our team. He was over our Veterans Board, at Veterans Outreach, and then he's moved to our Police Athletic League, um, which is going to build and foster relationships with um, youth in our community uh, through sports, whether it be boxing, basketball, soccer, archery, football. I mean, they're, they're endless. Um, so the biggest push for this is trying to get community partnerships and other things to develop and get either donations and um, supplies to start funding these activities. Uh, and then he'll coach and mentor them through that program. So, and that's uh, uh, there's a nat there's a Florida pal and a national uh, pal that um, you are partnered with, and then you play against those leagues. A pal is police athletic league. If I didn't say that, any questions on that program? What's the eight when you say you you sponsor They do all different age depending on what sport you're playing. So, like this summer, um, we're looking at doing a three on three basketball tournament or a five on five, depending on how much interest we get with middle school age students. So, like eleven to fourteen year range. And we're going to do them through all the county schools, and then eventually the top teams from each area will compete in one tournament toward the end of the summer. And we're not segregating this group. No, man, that's going to be open to anybody who's interested in it. So, but it's run through the schools? No, it's going to be run through the sheriff's office. We're just going to use the school facilities for their basketball um, courts, hopefully. Hopefully. We're still, they're still, it's in this infancy stage, so there's still a lot of logistics and things that we have to work out. So how are you, where are you getting the youth from? Are you trying to target some uh, communities or different areas? I mean, We're trying to get them from the school. So our SROs will be a big part in it and putting out our flyer and things to get the attract the attention from the youth at the schools. Um, they don't necessarily have to go to that school. If they're close by and they hear it and they're homeschooled or something else, they're more than welcome to join as well. We're just trying to use the schools as our avenues to get this out because of the short duration that we have before we kick it off. And then summer school starts and everything else. We want to start training and, and doing the small tournaments or small uh, teams during the beginning of summer. And then toward the end of summer, have the major one, which is the playoff game between the whatever top schools are. I guess my question is, so it's open to any kid. So it's not just for just middle school. For youth that aren't participating in uh, Florida High School Athletics Association activities like football, basketball, baseball. Is it for others that aren't involved in the school sports? No, they can, or any of they can be in school sports and do this okay. too. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. The idea is to foster and build that relationship with law enforcement to where we're going to have, we'll be the coaches and interact with them. Right. Yeah. A little bit I remember about PAL. It's a league all of its own. Polk County used to have, I don't know if they still have this, um, Orange County, all of it. And so my question would have been is Kissimmee and St. Cloud. No, sir, not at this time because we're still trying to build ours up maybe in the future as we evolve it more. Right now, no, um, they don't have their own police athletic league. And actually, when we reached around to a lot of the um, other sheriff's offices and police departments, a lot of them don't even do it in-house at the sheriff's office. They have a charity that it goes through, and then it's a total private entity that is underneath the, the sheriff's charity that runs that program. They still have officers and deputies that work with them, but it's not straight through the sheriff's office. This is totally operated by us. Yes, sir. For right now. As we grow and evolve, it, it, it has the endless possibility to be all over. But right now, it's just going to be with us until we can put all the groundwork down. Okay. Anything else for that? No? All right. So, Victor. Um, Victor is a veteran initiating change through organized response. So, it's going to be veterans helping veterans. Um, similar to how you guys review the stuff that we do inside the agency, they're going to look at uh, things that are brought to the board, whether it's a veteran who needs a new roof or a transmission in their car or needs help paying for medication, something else like that. Try to get donations in through the community, and they use those resources to help veterans inside the community. Uh, there's a big push, obviously, the sheriff being a veteran himself, he wanted to really put a drive to helping veterans. So I'm going to bring up um, Deputy Colson this time, uh, Ben Colson. He is going to talk to you about uh, his job as a veteran outreach officer and a little bit uh, of why the veterans program or veterans Victor board would have been beneficial for um, at that time. Okay. Good afternoon, Deputy Colson, Sheriff's Office, and the Veterans Service Deputy. Uh, in the 
respond to calls or take recommendations from uh, patrol. Um, they encounter a veteran that's in crisis. Um, we follow up with them afterwards. We will make sure they're taking their prescribed medications or not taking other medications. Basically helping them do day-to-day -day stuff using uh, the VA and um, also paying resources. Type of call, if you're working on, or do they call you um, and it's the individual tell you that they're better and they're going through some type of crisis? Um, yes. You respond then, or you respond tomorrow, or you're on duty, or are there other officers that are part of Victor? We're trying to get more information to them so that they can help um, at the time of crisis. Now, if I can respond, um, I will. If not, maybe just a, a phone call, hey, here's where you can uh, go or resources to use. So you the only Victor officer right now? Uh, currently, yes. Well, Victor is the board. Veterans Outreach is what his position is. So there's only currently one, yeah. correct? Okay. Our crisis response team, which is going to be the, another thing that we're going to talk about here in a second, if Kat goes to the second one. So um, Benjamin McLean, he's a new one that just came to the team. Um, he's, it's going to eventually be two of them, and they're going to be partnered with a uh, licensed clinician. So they're going to go out. So just like yesterday, he bankrupted a veteran who called in who was in crisis, took him to the VA hospital. Well, now what's going to happen is that's going to go to Ben and do follow up and build a rapport or relationship with that veteran and get him to the services that he needs to keep him from having another PTSD episode or something else. I'm not saying that's what that veteran had. I'm just saying similar to those those types of disorders. Uh, PTSD is very high in veterans. So him being a veteran himself, he can actually speak from being. Um, deployed or going through basic training and all those other avenues that I can't speak of as a being a veteran. Uh, ben McLean is not a veteran himself, but he has a huge passion for mental health and he's on our hostage negotiation team. Um, he does a lot of things with CIT, which is crisis intervention training, hostage negotiation, or the, the HMT is the hostage negotiation team. So his avenue is to obviously go out and um, interact with people, build a rapport with them. So he's had several clients. One is um, uh, Addicted to drugs, and he has made a, a relationship with him. And the gentleman tells him, "Hey, I'm, I'm 10, uh, 10 days sober," which, with his drug choice, is very, very significant for being ten days sober. So he's going to follow up bi-weekly with him, making sure he's going to the proper outreach services and stuff that he needs to to not um, relapse again. Yes, sir. This Victor board is it a board similar to this one? Yes, sir. Seven seven panels, and is it, I'm assuming. All the panel members or most would be veterans? Yes, sir. So they are all veterans. Um, I didn't want to touch too much into to Ben's thing. So they are all veterans. Um, we had selected um, three of them, and then the other four were put before a panel board with the three members of the board that were chosen, and they picked the additional four members. Yes, sir. So this, are you all uh, in touch with the Baker Act uh, situation? If you got a veteran and you've got a problem, could he be Baker active or depending on the park place, I think is the place down there. Yes, sir. Depending on the criteria of what the call is, um, they, they could be Baker active, obviously, but we actually have a uh, open understanding with the, the VA hospital in Orlando and um, not to go back to the same place where you're talking about like hospitals, when you go there, they don't ask if you have insurance, they, they treat you for the cost. So the VA will take them, whether they have the, a, a proper DD-214 or any of that stuff, and then once they fill out, figure out they don't have the proper procedures, they can put them into another mental hospital or get them through the avenues to get them uh, the proper resources and, and uh, outcomes. Okay. okay, and then our last one is elderly services, which is um, done by two of our team members, is uh, uh, Lisa Hurd and uh, who is a veteran herself as well, and then Tom Rios, who's our chaplain, and he also, um, and, and they both go out and investigate anything that's not criminal related to elderly services. So they're, both, they're both civilians, um, so they have a tremendous list of resources that they can get people, which means meals from Meals on Wheels, uh, the Hometown Heroes through um, Council on Aging, 
all these different things. I couldn't even go into a list of resources. We'd be here another three hours just going through the list of resources we have in the community. But they go out there and say, what's the best avenue, or what resource can we give you to um, basically help them in the, in the time of need? <clears throat> Any questions about our other services? So that encompasses um, outreach services in total. And that's all been established since January of last year. So our team has done a great deal of work in about, uh, what, 16 months, give or take. So. I could ask you about your staff, but I won't. My staff? What staff? Stats. Oh, my stats? Yes. No. Um, good job. You, you nice. must know me too well to know that <laughs> I created a statute just for the, the statistical stuff that I wanted to keep track of. So that way, again, as we, we grow, I can show that there's a need to continue getting additional personnel. So that's why we're being Do you guys have a mental health counselor for the deputies? Um, yes, sir. That's Nancy Rosado. Um, that's somebody we can have her come in and talk if you guys want to. No, so, no I just was curious. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Can we interrupt Ben? I didn't know if we got off the track. Did he have more to present? Do you have anything else you want to add? No. I was just talking because I forgot a couple of things too, which you guys, your questions I asked. But see, I want to keep, I want to keep you guys engaged. So your questions help me remember. Anything else? As, as far as the Victor board, um, a lot of what they're required to do, or what, what their responsibilities are, is not only what you guys do. Um, if we do have calls related to um, veterans, um, and we're, we're still trying to figure out a way to continue to track that, um, we would share with the board and they can give us recommendations for ideas. They can provide us with resources. We had somebody come in, I think it was hometown. Commissioner Larry Belize with also Council on Aging, helping homebound heroes. Yeah, and helping homebound heroes. So they're providing us with resources that we can use to help our veterans. Um, another thing that we're looking at doing um, is um, through donations, assisting our veterans. If somebody is in need of maybe their rent, they can't afford their rent in that month, they fall on hard times, and the, the board would discuss maybe paying for that or fixing their car or something like that to help them move forward. So different different ideas and, and, and um, ways to help our veterans. And um, in addition to that, uh, uh, the way we run a lot of these programs, like, like with, uh, what Ben does, is um, I think you were asking about how we handle it. Sometimes he may go out there if there's a call in progress when we realize it's a military vet. And I understand we just got these guys, um, two of them a couple weeks ago, trying to move all these programs forward. Um, but he may do that, but the, the, the goal is, um, not unlike criminal investigations, we're gonna assign cases to them, be it the crisis response team, which is a mental health and substance abuse, um, which sometimes coincides with what the military um, veteran officer is gonna do. But they'll actually be assigned cases and they'll conduct follow up. You know, as far as um, the veterans, is to keep an eye on see if they need services, if there's anything we can provide them. We come up with new resources and we can help um, them move forward. I know uh, one of the programs that uh, Lisa was working on, or an individual, was a, uh, a gentleman from uh, BBL. He's a 90, 95 year old um, World War II vet. His house was in disrepair really badly, and she got involved, um, was able to help them with a number of different things, including, I believe, with one of our officers, or what's going on over there, mowing their yard for them. But they, uh, repaired their roof, they put their house up to code as far as disabilities and stuff like that. And I believe it was the, the Wait, uh, uh, Mobile uh, Heroes program that did a lot of the work. So the, the, his job is, and, and the board's job, the way we envision it, is to figure out ways to help our veterans and us who are kind of community. So if you all have ideas or you know people, we're always looking for ideas and suggestions. We're creating a resource guide for my own entire division, which is not just veterans, it's not mental health, it's it's um, homeless, any type of resources out there for the citizens of Osceola County in our community, um, we're trying to get that compiled so we can put it out for our patrol deputies. But every one of these programs, they're going to be assigned cases and they're required to be followed um, to, I mean, for instance, the crisis response team, if somebody is Baker active, they get out of the hospital or get uh, released, we're going to do follow up, make sure they're doing okay, we're going to um, take, take notes and we'll continue to follow up as much as we can. Um, same thing with the veterans. I mean, substance abuse, you know, unfortunately in Osceola County, I think in the last 
Last year, I believe we had 111 deaths attributed to substance abuse. This year, it went down one. This last year, 2021, went down one. So what we're looking at doing, even with that, is, is our deputies, if they um, do a Narcan deployment, the subject is, it, um, has been involved in substance abuse, is taken to the hospital. After they're released, we'll probably, or we will, assign a case to one, uh, one of our crisis response team deputies. Right now, we have one where we're going to get the second one because we have a lot of calls in Osceola County for both mental health and that, I believe it was almost 3,000 calls over the last year. 95, I can't remember the exact number. But our, our goal is to continue to, to work with them to, in, in, in the case of the substance abuse, to try to keep them off the drugs and moving forward with their lives. And with the mental health, the same thing. A lot of times it's not necessarily maybe a stressor in their lives and maybe, you know, um, they're not getting the proper medication and that's what we're going to be working with Park Place. They're actually providing us with two clinicians that will be working with our deputies. So they'll actually be um, running with our deputies will get the whole thing completely up and running. So right now we have, if we have um, calls, the other day I can give you an example. Um, Deputy McLean was out making um, follow-ups on some of his cases and, and a call came over about a Baker Act. Patrol um, was busy actually ended up being a military veteran um, in distress, he actually took the gentleman to the VA hospital under a Baker Act. And as far as how they do it, if they're out in the field, yeah, they're going to go ahead and um, respond if they can. If, if after hours, we're going to always try to do follow up as much as we can with those programs. The only other program that we're working on currently is um, the Julian Outreach Program, and that um, we haven't quite figured out exactly how we're going to move forward with that because we're trying to keep all the other programs any new program, we all know there's going to be um, uh, stuff that we have to work through to make it work more effectively. So that's part of the reason we want to talk to you all tonight. If you guys have ideas or suggestions how we can improve our programs, we're all you know, one here. Any questions or anything as far as that? You mentioned some very interesting uh, <coughs> ideas there in uh, the uh, Deaths from uh, drugs. You said there was so much this one year, and this year is so much less. Is that what you said? So I believe it was in 2020. I don't have the statistics in front of me, but we had 111 um, substance abuse related deaths. Okay. 2021, the end of 2021, we had 110. Okay. Those, are, those are some uh, statistics that, that uh, some of the other programs we've talked about. They appear to be what you're doing is it's successful and it's having an impact. And I think that maybe uh, those statistics could be publicized a little, a little more to let the public know that, hey, you know, these guys are out here working and it, they're succeeding. So just, just a thought there. Well, I appreciate it. We're, we're trying to get the programs, like I said, we're trying to open them soft. Because most recently, I think it was two weeks ago, we got two of our people. The third one, we're, we have to go through a posting program and, and a selection process. But yes, we are keeping track of them. And, you know, uh, Sergeant Nicholson came up with a, a, a stat sheet for my team. And it's, it's basically so we can um, show that the programs are working and also justify the need for additional personnel. Because I mean, when you're looking at almost 3,000 mental health calls in Osceola County last year alone, that's that's a lot for two people to handle, but again, we're, we're, we're constrained by our budgets as well. You know, we spend too much too much. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. um, last meeting we had discussed um, the ones that was actually present as to instead of meeting. Monthly meeting, uh, change to either every two months, three months. Okay. Your call, Mr. Chair. No. You make motion, we'll, we'll keep an answer. Okay. Uh, is there a recommendation as to quarterly or? What's the position of SO? Do you feel we need to, we need to meet monthly? Yeah, we still need to meet monthly. 
leave it our policy, it says we have to need money. Yeah. That's under the guidelines. We we'll review that. We'll talk about it in the next one. If not, um, if nothing else, this recommendation would be adjourned. Well, we have to um, real quickly go over if there's anybody that wants to make public comments. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, those wishing to make comments to the board, please stand and be recognized. No one wishes to speak. We'll move forward by saying no one heard or seen. Concludes the public comment portion of the meeting. Our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022 at 6 p.m. All right. Let's go home. 706 meetings here.